Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Ms. Julie Gishuru, an award-winning journalist, a peace advocate, and a conscientious entrepreneur. Julie Gishuru is best known in her native Kenya for her long career as a media personality. Her television specials promoting a nonviolent response to the 2007 Kenyan election led Ms. Gishuru to become the first African woman to receive the Martin Luther King Salute to Greatness. Over the um, past decade, her investments in media, fashion, retail, and the entertainment sectors have extended her reach and her positive influence. As a result, she has been named one of the top 100 most influential Africans or African women in the world on several occasions. Ms. Gishuru's ongoing contributions through her production company and as Chief Public Affairs and Communications Officer at the MasterCard Foundation helped to promote a positive message about Africa on the continent and beyond. She's also a passionate promoter of maternal health care and safety of women. She continues to push for Kenyan and African progress through her work with prominent organizations such as the World Bank Group, African Development Bank, various UN agencies, and Africa Leadership Initiative. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Board of Governors and Senate, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Ms. Julie Gishuru so that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Dr. Gushuru. I ask you to please address the convocation. Thank you so much, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class. Family and friends, it's a great honor to be here with you all to accept this degree, this humbling recognition. And I'm so excited for you all, for you who are graduating, for your families, for your friends, for Concordia. You know, I remember this moment for me about 150 years ago. No, it feels that way now. The excitement, you know? The hope, no more assignments, no more lectures, right? It was done, and I was moving on to a new season. But I was also incredibly anxious, worried, even fearful of what the future held for me. Indulge me for a moment. You know, it reminds me of The Sound of Music and Maria as she headed to the Von Trapp family home and she sang, what will this day be like? Do you remember? I wonder, what will my future be? I wonder, my singing is like my cooking, so I'll stop. Um, but I said to myself at that time, Julie, just stay focused. Keep moving, don't stop. Take one step after another, just go step by step it will be fine. Now, I studied law, and then I did an MBA with a focus on international business and world trade law. And between that, I spent a year working anywhere I could in factories, 
I worked in the students' union, you know, I worked in the pool room, cleaned the pool tables, sold drinks and food, did everything I could to get myself through university because um, I really wanted my master's. Um, when I started looking for a job after I graduated, I was knocking on doors and I kept being told, you're overqualified. You're overqualified. Then I decided, guess what? I'm going to do something non-traditional. I was watching TV in Kenya. And I thought, hmm, I'm watching news. I can do some of that. And since I can't get a job, maybe I can get some invaluable experience. So I knocked at KTN, a television station, at their newsroom. And I asked if I could try out for a job. And they asked me to do a screen test. I was very lucky to get hired as an unpaid intern, I need to say, um, for a period of time, because they had a shortage of legal and business reporters. And that's how my media career began. My life has not been a straight path. Agility is absolutely critical. I've done, as you heard, I've had an entrepreneurship journey and then met with the MasterCard Foundation. And I'll come back to how they found me. And uh, most important thing was through the trials and tribulations, problem solve. Find alternative pathways and don't be scared to use them because sometimes they open the door to your real success. And remember, stay focused, don't stop. Keep moving step by step. Now, growing up, I would talk to my parents about university plans, and they were super supportive. My mom has always been a bastion. My father, too, was so excited about me pursuing a legal career. When I finished high school, I recall a day, he comes up to me and says, Julie, you know, in our culture, there are certain things that we do. And a young man and his family have come to ask for your hand in marriage. Now, this was a shock to me. I thought I had fairly modern parents, right? And I was stunned. And it got worse because he said, the young man is in the living room. So um, maybe you could just go sit down, have a chat, connect, and, and, and see. And I was, um, I was I, I had no words, which is very unusual for me. I was speechless. I went into the living room where this reasonable looking young man was seated and I sat down next to him and before he could speak, I said, I think there's been a mistake, you know? Really good to meet you, but I think there's been a mistake because I'm going to university and I'm going to study and I'm going to get a degree and I'm not getting married. So, because my dad had taught me how to drive, I asked him, where can I drop you, you know? <laughs> And I did proceed to drop him off, uh, you know, ASAP. Uh, very polite, very clear, but very focused. And that evening when my dad came home, I was nervous. I didn't know if he th would think I was rude or, you know, but I said, I'll just be really open. And I said, Dad, we had a plan. We talked about this so many times. What changed? And he reminded me a few years ago, I said to him, please let me go to university. Help me study. Let me do that. I promise I won't let you down. And this moment for me is just so moving and poignant because it takes me back to that. And it's a reminder to all of us to really play every role we can to help advance education for girls because it is still a challenge. You know, thank you. I had a successful career in the newsroom, but um, got a bit tired of interviewing the same politicians over and over again and doing the same kind of stories, and had a passion for African dialogue and for inspiring the African continent. And I kept asking my editors and, and the teams, you know, can we do this? And nobody was interested. So I put my money together and I put a small crew together and started something. We traveled to the World Economic Forum on Africa. Uh, on, my, on my dime, and we started a show called the Africa Leadership Dialogues. And that was in 2012, and people laughed and said, why are you wasting your money? And four years later, I was able to leave my newsroom job at the height of my career to a lot of cynicism to step fully into 
Africa Leadership Dialogues, a platform that grew not just in Kenya or on the continent, but globally to drive conversations on development. And so trust your gut, guys. Trust your gut. Do what your soul tells you is important, even sometimes with naysayers. And that's, why I'm, that's where I connected with the MasterCard Foundation. They found me uh, in this space and said, Julie, come and join us. We're doing some incredible work. You may know the foundation. It's a Canadian foundation, now one of the largest in the world, formed just in 2006 out of a gift from MasterCard, but has grown exponentially. It's an independent foundation with its own board of directors and management team. And the focus of our work has been Africa. Our mission now is to ensure through our strategy, Young Africa Works, that 30 million young Africans find dignified work by 2030 with a 70% focus on young women. And here in Canada, our LV program supports indigenous Canadian learners on their pathways through university and college and on to economic opportunities. It is humbling to be where I am today and to serve such a great mission. And as I look back, everything I did, my law degree, theater, I didn't mention, my passion was theater at one point, um, my master's, the job in the students' union, the job in the factory, everything I did comes together to add value to what I do today. So even when you're going through hard times and wondering, why am I doing this? Take what you can, learn, better yourself, grow, and build yourself to be titanium strong. Some quick... Some quick fire tips as I start to wind up. Be agile, be adaptable, take every opportunity to learn. In spite of all the challenges you face, I've said this several times, stay focused, don't stop, keep moving step by step. If you have your phone on you, just write those things down. Every time you feel low, look at that again and say that to yourself. Know yourself. Ask yourself, and again, write this down if you can. Who am I and am I who I am? Don't let the world push you in different directions. Know thyself and then ensure you're living a life that's true to yourself, your journey, your passion. Build your village. This is so important. Remove toxicity with no apologies. Everything that brings you down and is heavy on your soul and makes, makes you feel worse every time you're in that space or you engage with those people, clean that up. Put people around you who nurture you, who are constructive in their criticism, who are your cheerleaders who grow you. That's critical. Put people around you who love and care for you and also love and care for the people around you. Embrace a thankful spirit. I thank God for everything. I mean, on my own, on my own strength, I am nothing. And, I, and it's, I'm just in awe that I'm able to stand here today. And for me, it's really, it's really God. I thank my husband of 19 years, Tony, for putting up with me. Um, yeah, and uh, our children, our children, for being part of the journey and of the growth. And, and in that, I just want to recognize, can we just give a round of applause to the families here today? So remarkable. Thankful also to family and friends and colleagues who are so supportive. Thank you, thank you. So believe in yourselves. Believe in your vision, your hopes, and your dreams. Be strategic and follow that through with action. Stay focused. Don't stop. Keep moving step by step. And in the words of African change maker, Burner Boy. You all know him? Yeah? <laughs> he says, keep working, keep trying, keep moving. Make mistakes and learn, but never regret. I ain't perfect. Neither are you. And guys, that's OK. Just keep moving. As I close, allow me to celebrate you all in African style. I'm going to do something called the ululation. 
a lot of African cultures embrace that, and I think maybe some others as well. Uh, may you go out and do great things. May you make the world a better place. May you have a fulfilled and a joyful life, an ex exciting journey. Go forth now and conquer the world. Thank you. Wow. Dr. Gishuru, I want to thank you. One of the things that's very clear to me is you definitely did not let your father down. Your energy, your focus, your drive, your spirit was so inspirational today. I got to thank you, and I, I can't do what you just did, but if I could, I would. <laughs> thank you very much.